Hello there. Today, another very serious problem to think and to talk about with each other. Race. Race in human beings, of course. Now, the first information and the very important information first. Did you know that there is no such thing as race in human beings? Nope. So our idea that first there was race and from that developed racism is wrong too. It's the other way around. First there was racism and then developed the idea of race. Racism, we don't know how long that has been existing, but I imagine for thousands of years, really, meaning the rejection of another human being who looks different. As simple as that. Thinks different, differently behaves differently, speaks differently. But, so this feeling, the rejection of the other, is probably very old. And then only when the idea of science came up in the human development, in the 18th century, so not very long ago, scientists looked for what they wanted to find, race. And of course it's easy to find it because we look so differently. It's easy to find that we must be of different races. But then, in the 1950s, the DNA was discovered. And since then, scientists have been able to prove they don't find any gene in our DNA from which they could say, you are this race and I am that race. There isn't. There isn't. We're basically exactly the same. I think that is wonderful news. Now, on the contrary, something else they found. Supposing these scientists looked at my DNA, and as much as we remember, we're all Germans, and compared my DNA with the DNA of my neighbor. And as much as he knows, all his ancestors are also German. Now, the chance that there are differences in our DNA is bigger than if they compared my DNA with the DNA of my Congolese friend, who, of course, looks quite differently from me. Now, how is that possible? They have found, really, differences within a group are, tend to be bigger than the differences between different groups. Now, how is that possible? Because we look so different, she and I. I'm telling you a story. Now, this time, for the first time, this is not a true story. I have imagined the story, but it could have been true. It could have happened exactly like that. Let us go back together 250,000 years. And that is where all, no matter where you live, listening to me, no matter what you look like, we all originate in Africa. 250,000 years ago, all our ancestors originate in Africa. Then, for thousands of years to come, they roamed around Africa. Then, but only 70,000 years ago, which isn't all that long, some of these decided, my ancestors decided, for whatever reason, to leave Afri what is now, what we now call Africa, of course. So, possibly, they roamed along, walked along the Nile up to the Mediterranean. Thousands of years later, they decided to walk through what is now Egypt into what is now Israel, through Syria, the Lebanon, and into Iraq, 
thousands of years later, into Iraq, Iran, stayed there for thousands of years. Then again, some generations and generations later, walked further on into East Asia, and some, perhaps of the most adventurous, even across the islands and into Australia. At the same time, my ancestors decided to roam another direction. They crossed Turkey, walked up the Balkans and into Central Europe. Thousands of years along, of course, endless generations later. Possibly at the same time in which my ancestors decided that in Central Europe, in Germany, they would settle 12,000 years ago, that is, is when our ancestors decided, for whichever reason, to settle down. Possibly, at the same time, the ancestors of my Congolese friends, who had been roaming around Africa for thousands of years, decided to settle in what is now the Congo. But how come then that we look so different? Well, let's go back those 250,000 years ago, at the beginning of humans. When we had lost our fur, nature needed something else to protect us from the burning African sun standing there above our ancestors on the African, above the African equator. And only dark skin, very dark skin, could protect them from the sun. Otherwise, they would not have been able to survive. Now, as my ancestors, for example, walked ever further north over the thousands of years, they, of course, left the sun behind themselves. The sun remained behind above the equator so that my ancestors caught ever less of the direct sun rays. But scientists tell us that sun rays contain UV rays and these are absolutely vital for human survival. And nature being very imaginative, very inventive, very adaptable. So as my ancestors caught ever less direct sun rays, their skin lightened. It took thousands of years, but their skin lightened for that reason. And it's not so long ago because they found that the Scandinavians those who roamed the furthest north in Europe. It is only 5,000 years ago, not more than that, that they turned as pale as we now know them for, and also their hair turned as pale as we now know it. So, wherever you may live and whatever you may look like, and next time you look into somebody's face who's quite different from your own, into eyes of a different color, of a different shape, onto hair of a different color, onto skin with a different color. Listen to people who speak different languages and who behave differently. Don't simply reject it because it's different. Think about it. No matter where you live and no matter where they are from, they are your relatives. They are. Now, isn't that wonderful? We're all relatives. Think about it. Goodbye.